for, for question six, we've been given that cos 17 is equal to k over five. We do know that in trigonometry, cos any angle is x over five. So our x value is k, our value is going to be five. This cos 17 is going to lie on the first quadrant. So, so this quadrant where our x is k, our r is 5. The next thing that we're going to do is calculate the value of the y. We're going to use Pythagoras x squared plus y squared plus r squared, k squared plus y squared plus 5 squared. A squared plus y squared plus 25, y squared plus 25 minus a squared, we want y, y is going to be the square root of 25 minus k squared. 25 minus k squared. This question is asking us to find sine 17. Sine of any angle is y over r. We have already calculated our y. It's going to be the square root of 25 minus k squared over positive 5. For this one, 10, 2, 5, 3, 253 can be expressed, can be thought of as a reduction angle where we have 10, 270 minus 17 degrees. But we do know that 270 is an identity within the third quadrant that means 10 positive. So this can also be expressed as just 10, 17. We do know that 10 is sine over cos or y over x can be expressed as the square root of 25 minus k squared over, over k. Then sine 124, sine 124, 124 lies in the second quadrant, and the second quadrant can be expressed, can also be expressed as sine 180 minus an angle that we have to subtract to get an angle, an angle that we have to subtract from 180 to get to 124 is 34. Is 34. But we do know, we also do know that sine 180 minus can be expressed just as sine of the can be expressed as sine 2 of 17. And sine 2 can be expressed as 2 sine 17 cos 17, where sine 17 is the square root of 25 minus k squared over 5 multiplied by cos 17, which is k over 5. Therefore, this product is going to be 2k, the square root of 25 minus k squared over 25. For this question, we've been told that the, this identity sine alpha minus beta is equal to sine alpha cos beta minus cos alpha sine beta. We need to use that to prove that cos alpha minus beta is cos alpha cos beta plus the product of sine, sine alpha and sine beta. Sine alpha and sine beta. The first thing that we're going to do is bring this down. Sine alpha minus beta. We need to use this to prove that cos, this cos identity is equal to this, this entire thing. So we need a way to, we need a way, we need to find something that will convert sine to cos towards the end. And one way we can do that is by saying sine 90. This sine 90 will allow us to convert sine into cos. So sine 90 minus alpha minus beta. We distribute the negative out. Sine 90 minus alpha plus 
beta. But an important thing that we're going to do is that to, in this first step, in this first step, we had two brackets, these outer brackets and the inner brackets. The inner brackets were separating 90 from alpha minus beta. This time, we want the inner brackets to separate 90 and alpha from B. So we're going to say sign 90 minus alpha in the brackets between them. They have to be, these brackets separate 90 minus alpha from B. But we also want to find that separates these two to be minus. So instead of saying plus beta, we say minus negative beta. Negative beta. We're saying negative because we want we're saying negative because this is what we want to be left with, where alpha is separated from beta by a negative. Negative. Therefore, from here, from here, sine 90 minus alpha separated by negative from negative alpha. We then implement this one, where sine 90, we write out this identity here is going to be sine 90 minus alpha cos negative beta minus cos 90 minus alpha sine negative beta. Sine 90 minus is going to be cos alpha times cos negative beta is going to be cos beta and then minus cos 90 minus is going to be sine alpha but sine negative beta is going to be negative sine beta cos alpha cos beta sine alpha times sine beta is going to be plus sine alpha sine beta The first thing that we're going to do is expand these cos and sine expressions. But an interesting thing is that we also have special angles, so we're also going to substitute some numbers towards the end. So the very first thing that we do is expand this cos 60 cos x minus sine 60 sine x plus sine 30 cos x minus cos 30 sine x because we're working on special angles The first values, these first values are going to be our x's and the ones on the outer are going to be our y's. Cos 60, cos 60, we look at this, cos is x over r, so cos 60 is going to be 1 over 2, cos x minus sine 60 is y over r, so we're going to be the square root of 3 over 2, sine x plus sine 30. Y over R of cos X minus cos 30 is going to be the square root of 3 over 2 sine X half cos plus half cos is going to be 1 cos cos X negative square root of 2 minus square root of 2 square root of 3 over 2 is going to be minus square root of 3 sine x and this is because negative negative square root of 3 minus square root of 3 you're essentially adding two square roots so you're going to get minus two square roots of three over common denominator common denominator is going to be two the two cancel each other out so you're left with the square root of three 
question that follows next is to solve this with the consideration that x is going to be 45 degrees. If we have our x as 45 degrees, then we can substitute it in this cos 45 minus square root of 3 times sine of 45. 45 is also a special angle, so 45x is going to be the square root of 2 over 2 minus square root of 3 multiplied by sine the square root of 2 over 2. That's square root of 2 over 2 minus square root of 2 times square root of 3 is going to be square root of 6 over 2 common denominator square root of 2 minus square root of 6 over 2. Other people do not use the square root of 2 over 2. Instead, they use, alternatively, they use 1 over square root of 2. And although you will get to the same to the same answer, we generally don't want our denominator to have a square root. So one thing that we do is multiply by square root of 2 over square root of 2, so that we have numerator is going to be square root of 2. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is going to be 2. That's how I got square root of 2 over 2. But even if you use this, you still be able to get to this. So the next question is asking us to prove that this fraction is equal to 10 theta. What we're going to do is expand cos 2, cos 2 theta and sine 2 theta. So we'll have 1 minus cos 2 theta minus sine squared theta plus 2 sine theta cos theta over the same as half cos 2 theta minus sine squared theta cos theta. We're going to drop down the brackets so we have 1 minus cos squared theta plus negative negative sine squared theta plus 2 sine theta cos theta all over 1 plus cos squared theta minus sine squared theta plus 2 sine theta cos theta. What we have to realize is that from this cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1 uh, identity. If we want to make cos the subject of the formula, we need to transpose sine squared theta to the other side so that cos squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. The same with sine squared. If we want to make sine squared the subject of the formula, we transpose cos squared to that side so that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos squared theta. This 1 minus 1 minus cos squared theta can also be written as sine squared theta because from this we're just transposing the sine transposing the cos to that side so sine squared theta plus sine squared theta plus t sine theta cos theta over 1 plus cos theta minus sine squared theta 1 minus sine squared theta can be expressed as cos squared theta. From here, we're just taking the sine to that side, becoming 1 minus sine squared theta, so we have cos squared theta plus cos squared theta plus 2 sine theta cos theta. We're going to add these two, add these two, so that we have 2 sine theta at the top. And then at the bottom, we have 2 cos squared theta plus 2 sine theta cos theta. At the top, we do have a common factor, which is 2 sine. We're going to take it 2 sine theta. We're left with 1 sine plus cos theta. At the bottom, we have a common unit, a common factor. To cos theta, we will have cos theta plus sine theta left. 
sine theta cos theta, they cancel each other out. Two and two, they cancel each other out. We're left with sine theta over cos theta, which we know is equal to tan theta. We have proved this. The final question is looking at cos 2x plus 5 sine x is equal to negative 2. What we're going to do is find an, another identity, find an expression, a different expression from 2x. We do know that cos 2x is an identity that can be expressed in other ways. One way we can express it is by saying 1 minus 2 sine squared x plus 5 sine x is equal to negative 2. Negative 2 x sine squared x plus 5 sine x. If we take the negative 2 to the side, it's going to be positive. So 2 plus 1 is going to be 3 is equal to 0. We don't want to be negative. So we're going to divide out by negative 1, negative 1, so that we have 2 sine squared x minus 5 sine x minus 3 is equal to 0. You can use your quadratic equation if you want to. Our sine of sine x is equal to 3 or sine x is equal to negative 2, negative half. If you insert this in your calculator, you will find that sine x will not be equal to negative 3. So we're only going to focus on sine x is equal to negative half. This is going to be our general solution. An important thing to remember with, the, with these types, with these types of solutions, is that, is that, is that what you insert on the on your calculator is going to be x is going to be arc sine of a positive half. What you insert on your calculator is arc sine of a positive half. You're not going to insert the negative. The negative is there to show you where our solutions are going to be. Because we know that sine is negative in the third and the fourth quadrant, our solutions are going to be here. The negative sign is there to show us where our solution is going to be. But what you insert on the calculator is arc sine of a positive half. So, so our reference angle, our reference angle is going to be 30 degrees. Our first solution, this solution is in the third quadrant. We know that in the third we want 180, 180 plus 30 plus A360. 180 plus 30 is going to be 210 plus A360. Our second solution is going to be on the fourth quadrant going to be x is 360 minus 30 plus 360k is going to be 330 plus 360 k is 6.